All right, former Utah and Weaver State head football coach Ron McBride joins us now, former Cottonwood Colt, USC Trojan. Stanley Havili also is here, spent a few years in the NFL as well. And Dave Compton, executive director for the Ron McBride F uh, Foundation, uh, joining us as well. And you guys are here because Wednesday you announced an initiative to help fight and battle the abuse right. and the epidemic of the uh, opioid situation. So kind of explain why the Ron McBride Foundation is getting involved in this and, and what you're trying well, to accomplish. I think what, what has happened is, is the more that you look around at the problems in education and society, this, this thing keeps popping up. And uh, being at a couple of funerals of kids that have passed away of overdoses of heroin at the ages of 18, 19 years old, you know, and, and having one case where there's six particular individuals and uh, they're all hung around together and three of them are dead now. Uh, and then looking at former players that played for me that have had problems with, with uh, going from the pain pills to, to, uh, to further things, you know, and yeah. from surgeries. And then um, taking a look at the, the suicide rate in Utah yeah. and, uh, and all the things. And we're, so we're approaching this issue uh, you know, through edu through education, and uh, talking to all the experts, and then and then listening to the stories. I know that what in our uh, Mafu tournament we had uh, last year, ever again this year, one of my phone players, his son, which is an 18-year-old boy, was playing football at another university, o overdosed from he was on pain meds, and then yeah. he passed away. And it's, uh, you know, I mean, this is, this is, this is an issue. Yeah. And you're not, uh, Dave Compton, executive director of the Ron McBride Foundation. You're just not talking about it. You're, you're, you're getting to the kids early. Explain how the Ron McBride Foundation is going to attack this at an early age. Well, Coach's passion, of course, is about education and getting young people oriented to a healthy lifestyle early in their life. So our focus has been to go to the school districts and we're working directly with Ogden, with Salt Lake and with uh, Jordan districts. And we're gonna focus on going to K through five to start with and then all the way through up to 12. We're taking several uh, principals and uh, teachers to Boston for a conference on systems dynamics and systems thinking. So we're looking at not looking at this just as a drug problem, but as a systemic issue that has to be tackled very early on. So you're talking to the kids early kindergarten all the way through five so they understand the pitfalls by taking this medication. You have, you have choices that you make early on, and those choices have consequences or they have valuable things that can happen. What we're trying to do is to grow back, and we think that very, in the very near future, we'll be able to put together the systematic thinking processes for kids in early school so they're making that informed decision when confronted. Dave, you had some interesting statistics. We talked about the numbers before that really illustrate how big of a problem this is, not just nationally, but especially here in Utah. Well, we're number five wow. <laughs> in the nation in suicides. And when you look at the hospitalization and uh, the traumas and dramas that we're, we're not, we don't have legislation that, that really can address this. And our schools were focused to a great extent on teaching to the tests. We're going to be teaching to behaviors. Yeah. That's fundamental. Now, Dave and Coach Mack, we can talk about it all we want, but what really hits home Stanley Havili You've had to go through this. Yeah. You've battled the addiction of opioids, mm -hmm. and you have come through it, <clears throat> and you're continuing to beat it. And this is the message that you want to get to these students, a guy that had to go through some of these problems. So explain your story on what you would like to let kids know so they can avoid some of the pitfalls that you had to go through. Sure. Well, I think what the Ron McBride's foundation is doing is, is educating these kids. And like Dave said, you know, there's, your, your choices have impacts impact and you have to face the consequence and so when I got to the league I, I thought I was unique you know I thought that opioids and, and the addiction if I took it as prescribed wouldn't be a problem in the NFL, in the NFL. you know and and I ended up having a, a, a season-ending injury against New England Patriots and I was prescribed a boatload of 
of Percocets, and that had soon within a month or two became the answer to all my problems. You know, and, and regardless of the consequence, I couldn't stop using. So within a year and a half, I um, was kicked out of my house, was kicked out of the NFL, and I was in Park City living in a hotel room. And I didn't want anybody to find out. And I thought I was the only one. You know, and, and, and that pride and the disease of addiction, you know, can spin these thinking errors, yeah. right? That if you have education, can challenge those, those thoughts. And I ended up trying to kill myself three years ago. You know, I did. I ended up trying, I took 180 pills and um, I called it a day. So why, why, what led you to wanting to kill yourself because of these opioids? It was a story, and, and you guys know him, Alema Harrington. Yeah. You know, where he sat down with me and I thought I was the only person that had this problem. And for him to sit down with me and tell me his story and how I could relate to him. What resources were available to you? I mean, you mentioned a lemon, and but what help is out there for people that have this problem? There, what would you? What advice would you have? Yeah, seek out and get help. You guys aren't the only ones, um, and you know, not being able to to correct this path only creates more guilt and shame because you've got families. People have families. People have kids, but they just can't stop buying dope off the street. Yeah. Did anyone warn you about the possible? serious consequences of taking these opioids? Yes, but at a later part, you know, when I was in college, my mom used to tell me, don't take these pills, you know, and, and I'd be like, mom, I'm, I'm different. I won't get addicted. And then fast forward, I'm, I'm looking for heroin. Did you take it in college? I took it recreationally, but I didn't abuse it till I got to the league. High school? No. So it was college where you... Started, started taking it, yeah, to yeah. go hang out. So how are you doing now, now that you've yeah. this? Yeah, so now I'm, I'm working down in Utah County at a, a addiction recovery center, uh, and I work for Reflections. And, I, you know, every day I go out and, and I try to help people and empathize with them and, and share my story to, to, to give, give them power. Quickly, you have a kid, okay? Mm -hmm. It's an athlete or not that might be thinking about it or in that problem. What's that one thing you want to tell them right now? Coach, don't play football. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I I can't I can't say that I guess. But uh, no, Rod, just one real quick I, thing. I'd say that you you have to be really careful, and and I think the the medical people have to be more aware. And, and the coaches too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. They've got to be responsible. Yes. Are they responsible in college and the NFL to put a stop to this? Uh, that's a hard question to ask. You know, I, today I don't blame anybody for my choices. They were mine, and I own them. And that's a part of my recovery is owning my choices. Yeah. Well, typically, you know, typically what happens is you get, you know, you get through the surgery, you, you take the meds they give you. The meds are used up. Then the doctors will say, "Well, we're not giving you any more." And then, and then you're dependent on it. Then you go out and buy it off the street. And then what happens is the pills become pretty expensive, and so now the heroin's cheaper. So then you get you go to heroin, and then the heroin is laced with, with, with fentanyl or something else, mm -hmm. and then and then you're yeah. gone. Yeah. Uh, RonMcBrideFoundation.org. You can go there for more information how you can get involved and and you can help out, right? And the Lovey Man's <laughs> third annual. Um, is June golf 22nd, tournament. yep. And At we have, golf. we've set up six holes as the opioid trail. That'll all be um, caught on video and the like, and we'll have uh, materials for you when we get And that's uh, June 22nd, 22nd. on yes. Friday? Okay. Stanley, we're glad you're here. Thank you guys oh, for having me. Sharing your story. Yeah. Yeah. Coach. I'm glad you're here, too. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Mack and Dave, thanks for coming in, and uh, great effort. And uh, we support you 100%, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you.